It would be easy to make this roadside attraction just a travel gimmick. What it is, is a tiny stone town. Right along the driveway of a family home located in Prospect Hill, North Carolina, along Highway 86. It looks like a village for gnomes or elves. It's a whimsical place to visit and our kids love it. It's quirky. It's odd. But what about Henry Warren, the man who made it? My first thought was, this is another eccentric, an artist with a passion who created an oddity that people now love to visit. Henry L. Warren was a tobacco farmer. He retired in 1968, and at the age of 72, almost immediately began to construct these little buildings that have now become a North Carolina curiosity. For nine years, up until his passing away, Warren worked on Shangri-La, using bricks, stone blasted from his farm, and arrowheads found around the property. According to his wife, he would work from sun up to sun down, content as long as he had a cigarette and a Coca-Cola. Henry Warren died of cancer in 1977. He likely battled it for years, although it is unclear from what I was able to find whether this was the reason he created Shangri-La or not. But something stuck with me. Why did he call it Shangri-La? The name Shangri-La doesn't refer to a real place. It was first introduced into popular culture in James Hilton's 1933 novel Lost Horizon, which was made into an Academy Award-winning film by Frank Capra in 1937. In both the novel and the movie, Shangri-La is a utopian society nestled within the Himalayan mountains. It has become a representation of exotic paradise. But what motivated Henry Warren? Had he read Lost Horizon or seen the movie? The fact that he used the name Shangri-La shows that a retired tobacco farmer in rural North Carolina had some concept of utopia. But what did it mean to him? Was he trying to leave his mark before leaving this world? Did he have hopes for a brighter future for humanity? The engraving near the entrance of Shangri-La may give us the best clue. Henry Warren wanted to be a friend to man, and maybe that's the biggest takeaway. A good nearby place to ponder all this is Nomad at the Osbun in Hillsboro. It's about 20 minutes south of Shangri-La, and it's got a delicious fusion of Eastern and South American cuisines. You can find some version of tikka masala, Korean barbecue, chimichurri, or tacos at this place, and it is all good. I can personally recommend the samosa chaat and the front porch cocktail if you're into that sort of thing. It may not be Shangri-La, but on a good day in spring, the sidewalk seating in downtown Hillsboro is a paradise, all its own. If you like this video, please give it a quick like and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. Thanks!